Hi, I'm Dennis, and you may have seen one of my earlier videos where I introduce you to the rotary setup that I built for the Shape Oco, and then carved this koi fish out of a solid stack of plywood to test it out. But this plywood version was not what I really had in mind for the rotary setup. What I intended was being able to carve something out of a solid piece of stock material that is thicker than approximately 100 millimeters that fits underneath a standard Shape Oco setup. So in this video, I will show you how I made this koi fish out of a triangular shaped stock material made from an old branch and copper colored epoxy resin. I won't go over all the details of the 3D design, the CNC principles and the router setup again as already explained us extensively in my previous video. The only change I made to the 3D design of the koi fish was adding perpendicular tabs to prevent the fins from breaking off due to the vibrations. So let's get started. I removed the bark from an old weathered branch that had been home to all kinds of bugs and used a triangular plywood frame that was left over from the test koi fish for the measurements. I cut the branch to size so that it would snugly fit in between the front and the back plates of the triangular frame. I also got three smaller pieces for the fins and cleaned up the surface with a steel brush. I then glued all the pieces to the front and the back of the frame as well as the stumps of the tabs, using the plywood version to orient the pieces so that they more or less aligned with the body and fins of the koi fish. To close two of the three large openings in the sides of the frame, I cut MDF plates that would fit inside the pocketed groove, and covered both plates as well as the frame with duct tape. Even though epoxy resin doesn't adhere very well to duct tape, I figured that the large surface area and the fact that these plates are recessed would still make it difficult to remove the plates after the epoxy resin had hardened. So I smeared some grey grease on the plates and the frame before closing the sides. I sealed the cracks with more duct tape and wrapped a plastic bag around the whole mold as epoxy resin always seems to find ways to seep through no matter what you do. I then clamped the plate securely in place so that I could flip it over with the opening up. With all these holes and cracks in the woods I first used floral epoxy resin from the epoxy resin store as this type of epoxy is not as viscous as regular epoxy so that it can easily fill all the voids. It also takes longer to solidify so it has more time to release bubbles for a better bonding to the wood. I leveled the mold and put several pieces of scrap MDF in places that would not become part of the koi fish to save as much epoxy resin as possible. Even then I still needed 2 gallons of regular epoxy resin which I also got from the epoxy resin store and mixed them in two separate buckets for easier handling. I always pour part B in a bucket first and then add part A as part B is less viscous than A and this sequence makes mixing the two easier. After the epoxy was mixed to a clear homogeneous goo I added several scoops of Stardust Metallic Copper Nugget Mika Powder and mixed again. I poured both buckets in the mold and let it solidify. With such a large volume, the temperature of the epoxy resin went up quite a bit and it hardened after a couple of hours already. But I left it untouched for another two days to let it completely settle. The grease made it very easy to remove the panels. I noticed a crack in epoxy, which probably happened because the epoxy got too hot, expanded and then shrunk too fast. It didn't run very deep, so I didn't worry about it, as the carve would go deeper than that anyway. I had loosely wrapped some paper around the moving parts of the CNC router, to protect the belts and wheels from building up epoxy flakes and prevent them from slipping. But after only the servicing carve, I realized that this was not enough. I extended the protective pieces and started the first roughing carve, but still had to pause regularly to clean up the gantry. Just like when carving the test koi from plywood, I went through the sequence of roughing first the 6 o'clock side, then the 2 o'clock, followed by a deep carve of the 2 o'clock side to get to the inner curve of the tail, and finally the 10 o'clock side. After completion of the roughing carve, I noticed a few holes in the wood and epoxy here and there that had not been filled by the floral epoxy or the copper colored epoxy resin. These were most likely bubbles that had become trapped and I decided to fill them with a little bit of silver colored epoxy to mimic the orange and black combination patterns that you often see in koi fish. After letting the silver colored epoxy harden, I swapped the 4 inch roughing bit for the 4 inch ball nose bit and continued with the finishing carves, again going through the same process as before. First the 6 o'clock, then the 2 o'clock, followed by the deep carve of the 2 o'clock, and finally the 10 o'clock side. 
As before, it took several days to complete the car from roughing to finish. When done, I carefully cut the tabs and filed the stops as well as the carving edges with the Dremel, first using the sanding drum and then a flap wheel. I then started working on the pedestal from a piece of oak that I had lying around. It was cracked in the middle over the entire length and I filled that crack with clear epoxy resin. I jointed the board on one side and then planed it on the other side to make it exactly 15mm thick. The board would function as the base plate of the pedestal and I thought that a surfboard design would be the most appropriate for an aquatic creature. I added the Japanese character for koi on top, just so we all know whom the board belongs to. A leftover piece of pine would serve as the spoil board, and for the roughing carve I used an upcut bit. For this almost two dimensional mini project I could finally make use of the dust chute that I purchased from seasonal novelties. The roughing carve took only a couple of minutes. I swapped the end mill for a quarter inch ball nose bit for the finishing pass. After that I changed to a 90 degree V groove bit for the Japanese character. Last I inserted a downcut end mill to cut out the boards. The downcut bit left a smooth profile that required minimal sanding. The only areas that required sanding were the stubs of the tabs and a sharp edge on the bottom of the base plate. I glued a matching pair of teal colored agate bookends on the base plate using Fusit LN2000 and also used this liquid nails adhesive to attach the koi fish on top of the stone fragments. I filled the V-carved Japanese character with a little bit of silver colored epoxy to make it stand out more. After everything had dried, a layer of clear varnish revealed the age-weathered character of the wood grain and the copper-colored epoxy metallic translucent shine of deep orange, similar to how the scales of a koi fish reflect the sunlight. So here's the result of a lot of planning and 3D design, modifying the shape Oko, doing a test carve, and many hours of CNC routing. Domo arigato gozaimasu. Thank you for watching.